technology works and they really haven't thought through everything, but they want to try something out. So, you know, the easiest thing to do is to try out the stuff that you already know. So, for example, when, you know, when um, the transition from radio to television, not that I personally remember it, but from what I'm told, uh, a lot of the shows on TV were adaptations of radio shows. And they treated them like radios, except with pictures. Then over time, they started figuring out, you know, yeah, we can do a lot more with this, right? We don't have to just duplicate that, you know? And so on. So it always kind of goes through that cycle of when a technology comes out, you, you sort of just want to do what you did before, but in this new medium, and maybe there's something cool about it. Uh, but you're not necessarily exploiting the medium to its fullest potential. Let's put it that way. But then over time, people kind of raise the bar. Now if you had an adaptation of a radio show as a TV show, it would be real boring and no one would probably watch it. So people start to learn the stuff that is distinct about that technology and what really makes that technology good. Um, that's what we want to do with our mobile websites. Our, our first um, pass at making mobile websites for the up, up till now, our job has essentially been, first of all, getting a website that appeared on a big screen and get it to look good on a smaller screen. That was a good part of the, the first so much of this course, learning responsive techniques, learning uh, possibly having a different mobile site compared to the desktop site, and so on. So that's kind of what we did. We then looked at saying, well, you know, people that are accessing a mobile site may actually be uh, looking for different things than people uh, accessing a desktop site. So we talked about having separate sites. So we got to that. Now what we want to do, uh, and then we started moving in the direction with Warful of saying, you know, this is, there's a lot more stuff to this um, mobile devices than just a tiny little web browser, right? There can be a phone hooked to it. So we looked at how we can use Warful to determine, hey, is this, does this device have a phone? If so, be able to make calls on it, you know, and, and have a, a little button instead of saying call Mike at such and such number, you actually press it and it actually dials them. So that's one thing that we've done where we're moving away from just duplicating the functionality that might be on a desktop site and moving into really taking advantage of the characteristics of mobile devices because many mobile devices are phones. So the next step is going to be the topic of our class from going forward for the next probably several sessions. And that is the notion of geolocation. All right? In other words, one thing that's distinct about a mobile device you kind of get this a little bit from laptops too, but the idea with a uh, mobile device is that a mobile device travels with you. Even a laptop doesn't necessarily travel with you the way a mobile device does. You know, you could be walking around the courtyard looking at your tablet or your, um, your um, phone. You won't necessarily be walking around looking at your laptop. All right. Now, because we carry it around with us, knowing exactly where we are is a big benefit, right? So anything that we can do within our applications, and like the most obvious one is for things such as directions, can really be a benefit to us, all right? And I, I alluded to this towards the end of class last time that a map, a static map that shows the buildings of LC is all well and good. But a map that could tell someone where they are in relation to where they want to be is going to be even better. So, we're going to look at geolocation. And geolocation is simply having our code know where we are. Now, generally speaking, there's two ways that an application or a web page, if you will, can know where we are. One is geolocation based on IP address. The other is geolocation based on the GPS that's part of the device. Which one of these do you suspect is going to be more accurate? GPS. 
Yeah, the GPS. The GPS is very precise. Um, for example, here's a map of LC's campus. And let me zoom in. That's telling us that, well, let me orient this right. So it's, it can actually be like this. This is the main college center. All right. And it's smart enough to tell us we're right there in the business building. All right, we got to back up a little bit. All right. If we were to look at the business building, yeah, that's pretty much where we are, right? We're uh, away, we're on the courtyard side, right? Courtyard's right over there, looking out. And we're on this end of the building. There's more this way. And that way is the College Center. So this tells us with almost scary detail where we are, all right? In fact, if we were to take this and walk around campus with this, you know, we might even be able to change. All right, there, I'm going to hold it. I'm walking this way a little bit. Let me walk towards the back of the classroom. You'll notice that that is adjusting itself as we're walking, or as I'm walking. So we can get very precise location based on this compared to the IP location. So this is one way where what we can do on a mobile device is superior than what can be done on a desktop application. This machine, this computer, does not have a GPS. So how does Google know, for example, if we were to go in and Google Italian restaurant, around dinner time, so all my examples are, are food related. How does it know to show me in Illyria? It knows based on the IP address. Okay? As I'm sure you probably all know, every computer has an IP address associated with it that's on the web. So even if you're not a web server, you have an IP address. You know, that's how it makes sure that like if me and you were both on Google at the same time, you'd get your page, I'd get mine. You know, if you're at home and I'm at home and we're both accessing Google, how does it know where to send the different results? Well, it knows that based on the fact that when I submit it, I have my own IP address. I may not always have that IP address, all right? Like if I have a dial-up connection, I get assigned a different IP address every time. If I have like a... Um, a uh, cable connection, I, for the most part, have a consistent IP address, although it, that can change sometimes too if you reset the modem or, or other things. So each internet service provider gets assigned certain IP addresses to use. Obviously, two internet service providers couldn't be using the same IP address because then you're liable to get someone else's pages that they requested. And that's a scary thought, right? Um, but instead, um, you're assigned an IP address. And therefore, each internet service provider, it's known that such and such IP address through such and such IP address is the internet service provider that's in Elyria, Ohio. So, therefore, through IP detection, it can tell me I'm probably around Elyria, Ohio. Now, I might not be in Elyria, Ohio. I might be in, in Sheffield Village up the road a bit. And if I use this internet service provider, it may still tell me that I am in uh, uh, Elyria. Every now and then, things mess up, right? Because it's just sort of guessing that these IP addresses are being assigned the way that it thinks they are. For example, I've had my home connection. Um, at different times, it has thought that I have been in Louisiana and in Germany, all right? Back when I had Century Telephone, Century Telephone, I think their, their one big center for the web was somewhere in Louisiana. 
So somehow they must have been assigned some IP addresses and they maybe they needed some extra ones or whatever and maybe they didn't go through the process of updating their records, but I was getting an IP address that thought that I was in Louisiana. So if I Googled Italian restaurants, it would tell me Louisiana. My device doesn't give any information because it doesn't have a GPS, so the servers that are looking at that information um, have to take it based on the IP address, which again can be inaccurate. The Germany thing, I don't know what, what went wrong with that. All right, I don't know, maybe the code that took the IP address and analyzed it and figured out where it was from, um, maybe there was a bug in that code. It's, it's hard to say. Um, but it was funny because if I'd, I'd go to google.com and I'd get sent to google.co.de or whatever. And, uh, you know, it was hard for me to go to the default Google and I would reset my modem and eventually I'd get the right, um, the right IP, IP address. So, for whatever reason, that's, that technology, first of all, is not going to be like accurate, accurate. So, even if it works good, it might tell me that I'm in Elyria, but it's not going to pinpoint that I'm on campus of Loring Community. All right? And it's definitely not going to pinpoint to say that I'm in the business division building. Where a GPS, that technology can pinpoint very precisely uh, where, where uh, someone is. So you have these two choices. All right. Let me show you a little thing that I whipped up. Show you this. We looked at it before. This is code running on the tablet to show where we are located in relation to the map. The thought is, is that could be used for directions. All right. I posted to Angel some resources concerning this, and I'd like to take a look at them now. Here's a little tutorial that shows us how we can use geolocation and Yahoo's APIs to build a simple web app. Who knows what an API is? Have we talked about this? Yeah. It's kind of like instructions um, on how to use uh, services code. Exactly. That's a good way to put it. Instructions on how to use another service's code. It's a way to talk to some other service. You know, it's the, the rules of the road. The, the almost like a protocol, if you will. So, all right, I'm going to click on the demo for this. And this tells me that my browser does not support geolocation. Geolocation within HTML is a HTML5 feature. All right. Let's open this guy in Chrome. I didn't want to do that. That's okay. All right, if I click on demo, it shows me, knows I'm in O'Leary, Ohio, knows uh, that it is 4 degrees centigrade, which is 153 degrees Fahrenheit. No, I don't know what that is Fahrenheit. It's probably 40, 42, something like that. 
And then I have a little thing to go to see what the prediction is for tonight and tomorrow and so on. Now obviously my HTML code isn't smart enough to go out and tell what the temperature is outside and, and all that stuff. So therefore it's communicating with the service. That's where the API comes in. But my HTML code should be able to tell that service where I'm located at. And provided that is accurate, um, we should be in good shape. So let's go and let's download this code and take a look at it. Where'd it go? All right, here it is, I think, weather forecast. Let me go and copy that to the desktop. All right, here's the same code. Now, first thing I want you to notice is this isn't working. All right. Let's notice the error message. Please allow geolocation access to work for this. All right. The code that does the geolocation, obviously, if you think about it, letting a website know exactly where you are, I mean, there's privacy issues concerned with it. All right, especially you know if you have uh, if you're accessing from a mobile site and you're actually giving your GPS information of where it is. So therefore, there is a security uh, alert message that pops up that confirms. And I didn't see that message pop up. Um, Let me see where I turn that in, or turn that on, settings. The tabs, appearance, show advanced. Menu setting, advanced, privacy, content. All right. Very good. Ah, here we go. Ask me when a site tries to track my physical location. So now I go and try to open this.
I don't know why it is not. It's not asking me. Oh, this page has been blocked from tracking the location. Following sites will be cleared. Sayings will be cleared on next reload. Maybe because it's local? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that is. Let me, let me try one. All right. Told me this. I click that. Manage. Following sites have been blocked from tracking your location. This page. All right, I guess we look at the example online then, because that allowed me to do that. So let's go. All right. Yeah, it must be because it's local. It doesn't, different rules apply. I'm not sure. But there, notice I get a prompt at the top. I, I set it to prompt me to ask me, which is probably like a good idea. I, I suppose, you know, if you're really security conscious, you could say never. Um, if you're really uh, trusting uh, or not terribly interested in privacy, which, you know, you could say always allow it. But, It'll ask me if I want to use a location. And if I click Allow, it will then go in and it will show me that information. Let's look at the source for this. All right. Actually, we'll look at the source. It's the same source, so we'll look at this one. All right, we have some styling up here. All right, this is a function which goes and looks at your permissions and if the permissions are enabled correctly, it will go and it will um, ask you um, if you want to track location and it does it. The mechanism by which it knows whether you support geolocation or not is this navigator.geolocation object. So if your browser has one of those, then your browser can report what its location is. All right? And it does it by calling this navigator geolocation get current position. And we pass two arguments to that function. One of the arguments is location success, and the other one is location error. Both of these are names of functions. In other words, first of all, we check to see is geolocation an available feature on this browser. If you remember, when we open this up, in IE, because this is an older version of IE, IE8, we get the message saying your browser doesn't support geolocation. Where does it get that from? Well, the code checked to see if that geolocation object existed or not. For older browsers, that is not going to exist. So therefore, the if statement is not going to be true, it's going to be false, and it will show the error message which says your browser doesn't support geolocation. If it does support geolocation, in other words, if there's a fighting chance that your browser can do this, it will call the get 
current location function and it passes it again. Two functions. The function to call if it's successful, the function to call if it's failure. Just because your browser supports um, geolocation doesn't mean that you're going to successfully return it. For example, if there was a problem with a GPS satellite or you were in a location where you didn't have good GPS access or whatever. You could, your browser could be supporting the geolocation, but your GPS isn't able to find the satellite to tell the browser where it's located at. So, this function is for what gets called if we find a location. This lo uh, function gets called if we do not find a location. Okay, let's look at the failure first because the failure should be pretty straightforward. If it can't find it, it looks and it gives you a custom error based on, um, based on um, the error code that it receives. When that error function gets called, it gets passed an error code and we can test that error code. So for example, if I go here, let me close this and let me reopen Chrome. Ah. It told me, since I already agreed to allow that, it's going to continue to let me do that. Let me go and turn off that altogether. I'll say do not allow. Close that and restart it. Well, that's surprising. It was there as an exception. Okay. Now if I go, notice the error message says, please allow geolocation access for this to work. Notice that's different than the error message that IE gets. IE gets a message saying that geolocation is not available. Why? Because that navigator geolocation object didn't exist. So therefore, this path is taken. That object doesn't exist, it can't do geolocation, therefore IE shows this there. Now that I've disabled that in Chrome, Chrome's going to try to get my position, but because my permissions are set to not allow that, it will come through and this error code gets called and the error code is specific that the permission to get the location was denied. And that's why we get that message. So let me go in and change the settings to always allow this. Content settings. Now I can get back to that. So, in other words, if we look at the JavaScript code,
this function ran and it was able to determine the location. Alright? So, it came across with this location success function. So that location success function gets called. Now, we're not going to go into the details of the API for Yahoo other than to show like how this is, you know, other than to show some information about how this is done. We don't need to know everything about the way that Yahoo's weather API works though. Alright? What I'm able to do is, if this is successful, I'm going to get past this location success function, whatever the success function is, we'll get past a position object. And we can query that position object to find out exactly where they are, where we are. In other words, that that uh, that position object returns a latitude and longitude. All right. Well, that's all well and good, but how many people have their latitudes and longitudes memorized to say that hey, this is Elyria, that's North Ridgeville, and so on? So we want to go and we want to take that and get translated the name of the actual city that we're in, and then we're going to go and try to find some weather information. So. Once we have the latitude and longitude, we call this function, or we actually configure this function, to query Yahoo and find out, gee, what city corresponds to this latitude and longitude. And let's pull some information about that some weather information about that. It does its thing. We then can get from the results the city, the state, possibly the country code, and then information about the weather that we put on here. All right. So the key components for this is having in the geolocation detection to see if this browser supports geo detection. We define a success and a failure function. If geolocation is enabled, we call to find what the current position is. If it's successfully able to find the position, it will give us this position object that contains the latitude and longitude. If it fails, it will give us an error code that, ex that, that ha contains some information about why it failed. And we can test that error code and display an appropriate error message. Once we know specifically where we are, we can then go and do our thing and do something with the latitude and longitude. Any questions about that? I know this is kind of a big example. What I want to do is I want to break it down into smaller pieces. All right. Before I do that though, let's look at what other resources I had posted to Angel. I posted code that you can take that will go and determine based on your IP address what the name of the city that you're in is. I believe this is IP address. Let's see if I can run this.
give me all those stupid line numbers. Oh, check out a demo on my site. There we go. All right, there's a location. Interestingly enough, this tells me that I'm in Sheffield Lake instead of Elyria. Why is that? This is using a different service to take my IP address, take my location and IP address in and determine all that. All right. Let's look at this code. This code, again, uses the Google API, the Google Loader client location, to pull the latitude and longitude. So theoretically, we could use the geolocation object to pull the latitude and longitude and then use this guy to pull the name out, right? Because we would simply change where you're getting the latitude and longitude from. And then we could go and we could display that. Again, it's important to get a sense of communicating with these services. What's great about these services and the API is all you need to know is how to interact with them. What you're going to give it and what it's going to give you back. We saw in the one case with the geolocation, um, we were able to give, um, we were able to make a call and get back either a success or failure function that gets called. And if it's success, we can then go and query the appropriate methods uh, via Yahoo. Here we're doing something a little bit different. We're using Google's uh, location, which I would imagine is an IP-based location. And then we can go and uh, from that, we can, uh, it will display where we are. Here's the same code, except done in PHP. We have a little plug-in that has a list of things that goes and does the IT uh, location. Notice this service says that we're in Elyria, Ohio. All right. And it tells me some information about it. Gives me a certain latitude and longitude. But it tells me that I'm in Elyria, Ohio, and it can also tell me stuff that is nearby. This, however, is done PHP on the server side. I can tell for sure that this PHP on the server side is going to be doing IP detection as opposed to GPS. Why? Because the server doesn't have access to the GPS information unless we were to tell it that. All right. The server only knows the IP that the request is coming from. Now, the nice thing about the IP location based uh, um, request that we're making here to find out the location is that the user can't really block it. All right? The user can't really block it because the server has to know the IP that's making the request. So it can always return at least some sort of, even if it's imprecise, location that the person is at. Finally, there's a little discussion about client and versus server. And it sort of comes to the same location, uh, same location, same conclusion that we do. And that is that the HTML5 geolocation tends to be more accurate than that because IP-based geolocation depends on databases associated with ISPs to find out where you were. HTML5, on the other hand, possibly can use GPS. 
doesn't always use GPS, right? If the device doesn't have a GPS, it won't, won't use it. But it possibly can do that. And because of that, it's going to return accurately. All right. So let me discuss what your next project is. And your next project is actually a slightly bigger project. And what I aim to do is today we're having the lecture for the full duration or, or most of the full duration. And then Wednesday will be sort of a work day for you. All right? And I would like you to work on this project, although I do know you have some other things uh, to do. Now, in this case, I'm trying to, my aim in this, in this project is to like give you the pieces that you need to do this without necessarily putting them all together for you. So I'm giving you some resources, I'm pointing you in the right direction, and I can even show you kind of what I want it to look like. But then it's up to you to put everything together. So let's start with what I want you to look like. And what your project is going to look like will be this, except it's going to be a nicer looking than mine, because I just threw mine together as an example. All right, you will pull up a map of Lane Community College. All right, you'll pull up that map regardless of where in the world the person is accessing this from. All right, this is meant to be a little app or a little website that will help someone find their way on campus. If you know that, that the person's off campus. For example, if you know I'm I'm at home and in Amherst, and I pull this up, it will show me a map, an aerial map of LCC's campus, and I'll have buttons for all the all the buildings. So if I click the button for College Center, it'll show me, hey, that's the College Center. If I click the button for Business Division, it shows me the Business Division. So it only shows one destination at a time. So that way if I had an appointment tomorrow and it was in the business division and I wasn't sure what building was the business building, I could bring up the map at home. It's not going to show me my location spot because I'm in Amherst. Amherst is way off the map here. But I could go and say which one was the business building? Oh, okay, that one. And the pointer will point to that one. Now, it's always going to show the map of LC and the functionality is always going to work like I described it here. Let me bring that up on the desktop to show you how it will work on a desktop. It'll work like this. The map will come up and there'll be no pointer showing my location. Because all the desktop knows is that I'm in Illyria. In fact, if I wanted to zoom way out, it's going to show me a, as being in a pointer somewhere in Illyria. All right. But again, because this is imprecise, it, it can't pinpoint me anymore with any greater degree of, of, of accuracy than I'm in Illyria. So it will show me that, but that's not really going to do me any good. However, on a desktop machine, this functionality still should work. So I should be able to click on the College Center and say, hey, that's the College Center. Here's the Business Division. Again, notice only one of them is enabled at the same time. And notice that the button looks different for the one that's enabled. That way I can tell how this is. Now I did a very bare bones job with this. All right, I just put together the functionality and uh, an example of two buttons. You, you know, you'll want to do this for all of them. Now, I can understand you looking at this and saying, wow, that's a lot of stuff to do. It really isn't. All right? There's a few discrete things that you have to do. And you can build on it. You can start doing one thing at a time and figuring out how to do that and then proceed on to the next one. 
I put a little walkthrough of what you need to do for this in the instructions. First of all, this page has a lot of information on geolocation. So, for example, this is the code to get latitude and longitude. So I can go and click this, and it'll tell me There we go. It'll tell me what my latitude and longitude is. Well, we know that that isn't what, you know, that isn't our end result. But that's a step. We've got to know where we are before we can, we can put ourselves on the map. Now, interesting thing is, is to draw the map, all right, we need to know what the location of LC is. All right. Here's this example here that shows us how to get a map of our current location. All right, this puts us smack dab right by City Hall in Illyria. All right, there's a square I think. But we don't want a map of our current location. We want a map of LC. So how are we going to determine that? Well, let's do this. Let's go. To Google Maps and let's look for LC. Alright, here we go. We can switch between a map and a satellite view. Now the question is, is how can we take a spot on this map and get the latitude and longitude? Because that's what we need. Well, oh, how can you find the latitude and longitude of somewhere? Open Google Maps page, find a location, Pick a point on the map, right mouse, and select what's there. So, what's here? Voila, up there is the latitude and longitude. All right, so if I want to know the latitude and longitude, of Loyne Community College, and let's say maybe I pick something logical like the midpoint of the courtyard as being the latitude and longitude. I find that spot on the map. What's here? It gives me the latitude and longitude. Now, how are we going to put these together to display the map? Well, we know. how to get a map of the current location. All right? But remember, we don't want a map of the current location. We want a map of LC. Well, it would seem to me like we could easily adapt this code instead of asking what the current position is, all right, to ask, give me a map for this latitude and longitude, the latitude and longitude of LC. should be pretty easy to tweak this code to give me that. All right. So, fair enough. So, you then go and put a pointer on the map showing the set, or, or you then draw the map for LC. All right. So, that should be pretty easy to accomplish simply by taking those two, uh, two examples and combining them in the right way. Next thing we want to do is we want to find the user's location and put a marker on the map. Well, we have the code here that returns the latitude and longitude of the current location. If we take that and look up
actually this example here shows you how to put a pointer there. All right, this code down here. In essence, you're going to be taking these two examples. For the first part of it, you're going to be taking these two examples and sort of merging them together. All right, you're going to take how to draw a map of the current location, but instead of the current location, you're going to give a map of LC's um, latitude and longitude. You then are going to borrow from the code the code to get the latitude and longitude of the user's current location, and then you'll adapt this to put a marker there to show where their current location is. What you need to do next is find out the location of all the buildings on campus. All right, here's a campus map that shows all the buildings. So you might know some of them, you might not know others, but you'll go to the map on Google Maps for LC. And this is a new library. All right. I can do the white the right mouse. What's here? And that shows me the latitude and longitude for the for the library. And I can do that for the college center, right mouse. What's here? That gives me the latitude and longitude of the college center. So now we can we can identify the latitude and longitude of the college center. That brings us to the last part of the assignment, and that is adding the buttons so that when I click a building, I add a pointer to the map for that building. And that part actually isn't that hard. A little bit of JavaScript to do it. The hard part, the hardest part of this assignment for me when I worked on it was figuring out how to only show one pointer at a time. So that when I, um, when I um, click on a new building, it clears out all the pointers and, and adds the pointers, adds a new pointer in there. But that's kind of the last step. Each step intermediary is very doable. And I would suggest breaking it down and doing it exactly this way. First, draw a map. Or, or, or pull up the map of Loring Community College based on the latitude and longitude of LC. Then go in and pull up the, um, the uh, current location of the user and put a marker on the map for that. Then do the bit with all the different buildings. You may need help at any step of the game here. All right, this is one of those things. It's like you know, going to you know, I went to the eye doctor Friday, and they're like, "Oh, this glaucoma test is real easy." Yeah, it's real easy for him because you know he's not having it done on him, right? So I can say it's real easy, but again, you may have some difficulty with it. But I think if you take the approach of doing it one piece at a time and just focus on the one piece, get that working, and then add the second piece, I think that'll sort of be your key to success. All right? I believe I've given you enough information to do this. Now, a couple other things. I would suggest you do a jQuery mobile look for this. So when you do your, um, when you do your uh, mobile site, make it look like a jQuery mobile. That's a nice, quick and dirty way to make it look good without spending um, tons of time styling it. The other thing I would do is look at the Google Maps, consider any other sort of functionality that could be beneficial. 
And even consider something like, would you want to put a panic button in here? That if you press the button, it called LC security. Which you could do if you had a mobile phone, right? So consider that sort of functionality. Now obviously to really test this, to test some of this, you can do on your own, right? You could put the map of LC up on your own at home, right? To test some of this though, you, you need to be on campus because when you start getting into the user's position and making sure that that gets updated as the user walks around, all right, uh, you need to make sure that, that uh, that works and, and that, you know, if you're in the business building, it shows that you're in the business building. If you're in the courtyard, it shows you're in the courtyard. All right. So that functionality you need to be on campus for. So my aim is, is to give you the tools that you need and to be here for assistance to help you out with these things or to maybe help you out with some of the things that we haven't talked about. All right. For example, it would be nice if that location updated itself automatically. So like my mind did where as I'm walking it shows updates to my location. It would be great if it did that. But for the first pass don't worry about that. For the first pass just make it so that when you first go to the page it shows where your current location is. Remember we can incrementally build this. All right. Other things that you might want to consider this would actually be kind of cool and probably not that hard would be to overlay this map on it. So that instead of showing the aerial view through Google Maps, it showed you that. You could probably do that without too much difficulty. These are all thoughts of how you could enhance from the basic uh, one. But again, you know, think of doing it incrementally. Think of just getting the first step down, then going on to the second piece, and so on down the line. So, Wednesday we'll meet in lab. Um, if you prefer to work at home on this, or at least on part of it, or to get a start, that's fine. Kind of keep me in the loop though, so um, I'm not hanging around if people aren't, aren't going to come. Right? Because I'll gladly be here, you know, to give you a hand if you need it, but, uh, you know, if, if people aren't here around that time, you know, um, I probably will wait a while and, and then leave. Uh, but if you, if you want to keep me uh, in the loop as far as whether you're planning on coming, feel free to shoot me an email. All right. Questions? All right.